Hey everyone, Maury Curtis Dunbar here with Painted Studio. Welcome back. We are working again today on the sewing table that you've seen me working on the last few days. We're going to do some more foiling and then we're going to stencil on a pattern that I think is going to look really lovely on this. And I'm just going to continue my working. Um, so the one thing I've got to do here is um, find myself so I can see what's going on. Let's see if it's showing me up here. Yes, here I am. And then we're going to... I don't need to see my own noise there. I don't need to hear myself in double. So we're going to do that. Hey, looks like it says Jill is here. Thank you for popping in, Jill. All right, I am going to change our, our settings here so you can actually see what I'm doing instead of seeing me sitting here. So here is the table. Now, you know, I've been working on this. We have the blue pebbled foil on here. I'm going to set this to the side because quite frankly, if I don't, I'll probably do something bad and knock off, us off. <clears throat> we did have some hellacious storms on Saturday that really challenged the work, but now the weather is just a little rainy, so we should be okay. Um, we used blue pebble foil, deep blue pebble foil on here, and before I applied that, we had stamped on um, sky blue foil and navy blue foil, so it has sort of a crackly, coarse texture to it. It's a little hard to show it on camera, but the next thing we're gonna use is Ramsey's Roses in Gold. Um, let me move some things out of the way so I can foil, because this is all for later. And I don't want that to get in the way. Now, I still have not put foil adhesive on the legs. I didn't turn this upside down, but I will do that uh, either today or tomorrow, and we'll continuing, continue with that foiling. But for now, we're going to work on the upper part here with stencils, and we're going to foil this. And you're going to see a, it's going to make a dramatic difference. Um, if you all caught my live and my posts on from this weekend, I was home working on another project. Um, we found some great yard chairs, and we have a huge yard for the size of our house. So we're always in need of more outside furniture. And these were great finds. They, they're metal chairs, really comfortable, really big. Um, and I decided to foil them to uh, make them more usable for the colors that I like instead. They were just sort of black and they had a little rust on them. So I cleaned the rust off uh, and then painted them set coat metallic navy and then applied foil adhesive. Well, I should actually say I, I primed it with rust primer first. I used Rust-Oleum rust primer. That was... It's a very important step, especially with these. Oh yeah, that looks so pretty. That's the Ramsey's Roses Silver on here. Yeah, I got a little bit of transfer here. There must have been a sticky spot. That's not a big deal. All I'll do is put a very thin coat of foil adhesive over this later and refoil that spot. Um, so as I was saying, uh, I used Rust Primer from Rust-Oleum. Got a really, really nice transfer after letting the foil adhesive set up overnight. Um, took me about two days. Now, I didn't take the chairs apart. I didn't take the seating stuff off. That's a lot of work to replace. I didn't care. They were going in my yard, so I made my own life easier with things. Uh, again, if it was for a client, yeah, I'd, I'd be taking a lot of stuff apart to do it. But I didn't have to because it's just for me. So I am I can let certain things slide. I know I'm not going to be mad at my bill because, you know, I am my bill. <laughs> Let's get some of this in here. There's my little scrubber here under my hand where I can't see it. This is gonna, I'm going to have to turn this. I know some of this is going to be out of, not so easy for you all to see. I'm trying not to do that too much. But um, the, the only two choices are I turn it towards me or you see my back. 
And um, if you all watch the video from this weekend, that is not my best angle. I think the funniest part of that video that I created for this weekend, the, the, fat, the time lapse one, was my husband coming and sitting there, having conversation with me, chatting away while I'm foiling. And he's like, why aren't you stopping to talk to me? I said, because we're on live, we're on a video. He's like, we're what? He had no idea I was videoing. I was like, yeah, honey, look over there. There's the camera. You're on video. Smile. <laughs> He's like, are you going to be able to edit me out? I said, not likely. So he got he got to be part of the painted studio video workshop for the weekend. He was not expecting that. Get in here, get into this corner a little bit. Okay. Let's get up over here. This just looks so pretty. And it's not easy to tell that it's roses, which is what I wanted. I wanted to keep the pattern sort of subtle in here, just more of a visual texture, if you would. So if you look at that, you can see that there's just a little bit of visual texture happening here and it's really really pretty okay now i've got to get uh, the front of this and we'll go down the front here partially and i'm just going to press it in and i am not Again, if you've ever heard me say this, I'm not pushing right to this edge here. I want that to be a blurred edge so that when I have to move foil to meet here, it blends better visually. You won't see any sharp seam. Oh, that's so pretty. And then I can lay this on here, go all the way down, and you won't be able to tell where one spot started and the other ended. Uh, again, the chimes, that's my motion detector. I happen to be sitting where the motion detector picks me up. But look how pretty this is. Oh, I am so pleased with this. Look how pretty that is. Now I gotta come back here and I need to do the sides. That is so pretty. See how nice that is? Let me get this spot right here. And then we're going to turn it around and go to the back. I have these tops are sitting over on a table over there. I'll do these when those when I get off of here. This just makes such a beautiful look on here.
I'm going to check and see if I have anybody asking questions. Hey, Kay and Linda and Gail and Karen and Jill. Thank you very much, Jill. I appreciate that. Thank you. This is coming out beautifully. I mean, foil, if you've got a client who's up for this kind of a transformation, it is impactful and it is dramatic and quite frankly, it's fast. It's an easy transformation. It's, it's all drama, really easily created. All right, I'm gonna throw that into the bag behind me. I keep a scrap bag for um, foils that I've used on projects here in the studio. And then um, when you all order foils and foil adhesive, uh, I like to stick a little bit of scraps in every package. Okay, now we're going to take this. I'm actually going to try something back here because this is the back. Uh, so sometimes, you know, we still have sticky spots. As you can see, I've got foil sticking on here. And even with all that I've done and put on here, we can get a little bit of um, residual adhesion. And you can fill that in by putting another foil over this. Now, this may do exactly what I want. It may look like crap. Oh, no, that's pretty. That is exactly what I wanted. As you can see, we're picking up a little bit of silver in here, and it'll tie in beautifully with the rest of this. So we're going to do that on the rest of this piece, too. Oh, I'm happy with that. That came out just right. And then we're going to do the stencil over it. That gives more of that texture under, ba under base color that I was looking for. So beautifully and I'm going to come back here you're not going to see this edge just because I have to have it turned towards me to get it done I know not fair but it will it will look amazing when I'm done here let's get down here Sticky stuff. Now, fortunately, this is a client who kind of gave me, other than color direction, she just gave me some free reign to do what I wanted because she likes my style. And so that makes it easier for me to create. I'm not, I'm not terribly limited. But I just got a client bringing in a piece today that's a lot more traditional in style, and I don't get to do that very often, so I'm looking forward to that as well. Um, I am not ever been a person who's married to only one style. I like to do lots of different things. And if you've seen my bird houses, they're very, very sweet. And if you've seen some of my other stuff, it can get out there. And let me see who's there. I think that says Redemption Square. Of course, I'm reading a white label, again, you know, white print against a light colored shirt. So sometimes I can't always see what that says. But if that's you there, welcome, welcome. Happy to have you here. Okay, let's get this top part and the corner done. Thank you. 
Again, I'm just using this little scrubber. This is actually a, 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 a nail brush that I picked up at Home Depot. It's made by 3M. Nothing, nothing about it's fancy, but it really works well. It's a little stiffer than other small brushes um, because the bristles are cut short. But you can see, looking at it, I have, you know, I've kind of worn it. It's, it's been used a lot, so. Sometimes that softening there can be a problem. It's not always helpful. But as long as it keeps doing the job for me, I'm good with it. Oh, that's so pretty. Let's get this corner. Scrub too hard there because I can make a scrub mark. I can actually scratch the foils underneath if I scrub too hard um, trying to redo stuff. So I usually go back in with my hands. All right, so let's come in here along this edge, get the last of this spot. Here, where that overlapped. And get up into that corner. There we go. And then again, I've got to wrap. I'm going to take this little piece from before, and it'll make it easier for me to wrap around this small area than using a bigger piece. And at the moment, I'm not trying to get all the way in there. And now I just want to get a basic coverage on it. Right, so that is all done. And then what we're going to do after I put this over into my scrap bag, we're going to take a little more of this foil and we're going to go over all the blue and get some more of that blue and silver contrast in there. I think that looked so good. Sometimes stuff doesn't occur to me to do until I'm sitting here about to do something else. So let's put this here. And it's going to not grab evenly every place. And that's okay. It's not supposed to. Where did I put my little scrub brush? Oh, come on. What dumb thing did I do with it? There it is. Blending into the table. just gives that little pop of silver on there. It's so pretty. All right, we're going to take the same foil, since it took very little off of here, and we're just going to put it over here. Run it all the way around. Yeah, that's so pretty. You can see, if I turn it around now, you can see that little difference there of how that re that bits of silver on here pops versus this side. Now, I could use this some more, but really I'm going to save it for something else right now because I want to use 
again, a clean, fresh piece of foil so that I get the best release possible. I'm going to put this right in here. notice I'm only going in one direction. I'm not going to aggressively scrub this. I just want it to release little bits. It didn't release as much here. There wasn't that many empty spaces. I'll come back here with a little more foil, see if something else comes off, but not likely. Some parts are going to be better covered than others. But you can see right there, there was quite a bit that it released. So it's not predictable how much you're going to get. And that's part of the cool thing. And you're going to have to look, that's an learn to embrace it moment. Nice. And you can see it just releases as it's going to do it. There's no way to guarantee how it's going to happen. So now I'm going to take this piece and then go up over the top. little bit of extra design detail. Very pretty. Put that there. Get the back. Perfect. Happiness. Just love that. I'm so pleased with the way that came out. That made the difference. It made me figure out something that was bothering me. I didn't know what I was going to do. But now I'm very pleased. All right, so now we are going to use, I can't remember what this stencil is called. Uh, this is, let me see if I can find the name on here. It's one of the stencils we carry. It's by Wallovers. Uh, I, for my life, I can't remember this one. So if you look under stencils on our website, you'll find it. And we're going to place it at the top. Now, normally, I would try to place something like this in the center. Let me see if I want to do that. Let me see if I'm going to be happy if I do that. Yeah, I think I, I'm still always going to like it if I try to center my design. I might come back and make sure it's straight. And I just put a little tiny bit of spray adhesive on here just so it sticks. And as you can see, I can carefully wrap it around the design, but I don't want to get it too sticky because I don't want to accidentally pull the foil off. And then what I've done is I've made a mixture of Artsyville glass bead gel, our silver beads, silver glass beads, uh, a product that we call um, silver dust, which is a very, very fine glass glitter in silver, and faux effects, faux cream color, and metallic pearl. Now, this jar, this bottle is old. I've had it around forever, so it looks yellow. It's actually creamy white, pearly inside, and that's just because I wanted to make sure there was no yellow cast to this when it dried. I've mixed it up in here, and we're going to trowel it through the stencil. I'm using an old hotel room key. Um, you want something flexible because otherwise you can make the beads shoot everywhere. I'm 
and try to get it out from under my fingers and actually onto the surface. And you are going to spread like you're frosting a cake this across the surface. You're not going to scrape it. You're not scraping butter across toast. You are going to carefully spread this on the surface so that it A, doesn't have the beads rolling and B, so that it fills the stencil without drag marks in it. And I think I can turn that a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. Do you see I'm spreading it like I'm frosting something? If I pulled this tight with the edge, um, I have drag marks from the beads. The aggregate, which is beat glass beads in here, will leave a draggy pattern. I will wipe that. I will be happy. Um, the little bit of pearl faux cream color that I put in here will not change the color of the beads. It won't hide them. All it's going to do is add a little bit of color into the gel medium that suspends the glass beads and um, make it a little more visible. Now, I am hoping I don't have a lot of bleeding under here. I could because the stencil is ever so slightly lifted off the surface. But if I have bleeding, I know how to fix that too. We take a Q-tip. Um, I, yeah, I just had a big bleed right there. <sighs> nice. I just, watched it. I just watched it bleed and squirt right under there. Um, take a Q-tip. You can take clay sculpting tools, whatever you need, whatever you've got on hand, and just wipe it off the surface. And this is hard to do. When you have a surface like this that has multiple angles, the bleeds are very easy to happen. I don't get mad at myself for the bleeds. I know they might happen, so I'm prepared for them. But the thing is, with glass bead gel, you have to clean the bead bleeds up as soon as you lift the stencil, because if this dries, it wants to become very, very permanent, and that's not going to help you clean up anything will end up trying to chip it off with a knife and then ruin your design. So don't be surprised when I lift this up that I have a lot of bleeding. I'm not going to be surprised. I know, I already know that I'm fighting the tech, the, the surface here. It'll be what it'll be, but we'll be able to clean it up. flinging beads anyway because I'm on such a strange surface. Now the other way to do this is to have the stencil not folded around here and you just do each section by section but that's just as hard and you're just as likely to have the bleeds. The only time, you know, if I had a stiffer stencil, yeah, I would probably try to do that this way but this one's pretty flexible. So we're just going to Hope for the best, and if the one thing I didn't bring over here was Q-tips, so I'll go get those. So this is going to be a little bit of a messy lift off, and I already know that. a big ass bleed. And there's going to be one or two more. Yep. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this spot right here, lay my stencil on it because I'm, I actually happen to have silicone paper right here. I'm going to clean all the extra beads off my stencil because I don't want them drying on there. That doesn't help when I need to do another layer. that and then I'm going to come back here and see if I have product stuck on the back as well. 
because I will, since if you had something that bled, then there's going to be product on the back of your stencil. So pay attention to your cleanup so you don't bring it to other spaces. We're going to move this around in a few minutes and go on the other side. And what I like to do is I like to place my first stencil, let it dry, and then I'll be able to maneuver around it without smearing anything. Now let me go grab a Q-tip. I'll be right back. All right, so I have a box of Q-tips over here. I always have these in the studio. And you can do it one of two ways. If you've ever watched Jennifer Ferguson do it, she does this. Wex it with her mouth, tighten down the cotton, and then just cleans it up. And usually I do so similar, although I personally, I prefer to use a little dip in water, but I never do the, let's play it this way. Okay. That's actually so big I can put it in. Now the thing, the reason I keep wiping this off is that if I'm going to reuse my Q-tip, I don't want that glass bead gel still on there because um, it could actually scratch the foil, and I don't want that to happen. And if I have a little skip spot like I do right here that didn't that lifted off a little bit, I'll come back and fill that in, but I'll wait until everything has dried a little bit better. And I'll go in and touch things down with my fingers. It, and then I wipe it all off on my apron. This is why all my aprons look like this. All right, let's come back over here. And clean that up. Come down here, clean that up. Okay, I gotta turn it so that, I'm sorry you can't see me do it, but I'm at an angle that that's just what it's got to be. All right, let's clean that up right there. Okay. And like I said, just be careful doing this because you don't want your beads to scrape off the foil. And if you're a tidier person or more organized than I am, you would have a rag here to clean this up instead of wiping it off onto your hand. But y'all know me. If there's a, way, a messy way to do it, that's going to be me. And the nice thing is with bead gel, if things are a little too textury for you, you can kind of come back in. It's easier to do when it's even drier than this. But uh, you can just sort of pat it down, clean it up a little. I'm sorry that this isn't an angle that you can't see as well, but unfortunately with me being left-handed, that kind of happens sometimes. So overnight, this will tighten down, turn more translucent, and just by the nature of it turning translucent, some of the flaws will disappear. 
So this is where we're starting with this pattern. We're going to roll the crap off our hands and we're going to do this on the other side and then we'll do the same corrections on the other side. So here we go with this. Oh, I threw the foil right on the floor. So again, we're going to center, make sure everything's kind of pretty straight. There's nothing more annoying than a pattern like this that is suddenly at a bad angle. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> I'm telling you folks, if you have a question about how to do something, if it's going to go wrong for you, ask me. I have done it all, and I've done it all wrong at least once. All right, so wipe down my hands, put my roll of foil over to the side so I don't do anything bad with it. Grab my bead gel mixture. And we're going to do the same thing here. And there's a little piece of tape caught there, so that's not what I want to have there. So maybe if I'll start it from this side, it'll be a little easier for you all to see. Again, I am spreading this carefully, like frosting. You know, watch out for scratching eyes and stuff. You don't want this in your eyes. You don't want this on your glasses. I have one pair of glasses that I have a handful of this stuff on, and I went like this to push my glasses back up. Didn't realize it was on the back of my hand. I have a big glob of glass bead gel on my glasses. Fortunately, I was smart enough not to let it dry there. Now, if this wide shape is not comfortable for you to work with, see this scissor. Cut it in half if you feel a little more control that way. Personally, for me, I'm good either way. Sometimes I find the narrower ones harder to control than the wide ones. Hold your stencil down a little if you want. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. So did anybody watch any of the stuff from the Met Gala last night? I did not, but I always come in the next day for the for the outfits because some of them are incredible incredibly inspirational to me. This year's theme was the Gilded Age of New York. Um, and I happen to have been watching the Gilded Age on HBO, which was based in New York. So I had a, a lot of fun seeing how the fashion from the Met Ball tied into the period and then, um, Also, where it compared to the costuming done for the actual period. I love, I love that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not interested in the celebrity drama or all that. It's really the fashion. I really love stuff like that. But I also, I've always said, too, that 
I've, I don't just look at design magazines for ideas. I have always looked at fashion because fashion trends are usually a year or so ahead of design trends when it comes to fabric and patterning. So I love seeing that kind of stuff and I find it very inspirational. And sometimes my design ideas come right out of uh, a fashion magazine. Although, you know, there it's harder and harder to find fashion magazines now considering everything's gone online. Um, but I use, I love to cut out stuff from magazines and keep a file on it. And I'd update my file every year, throw out the years before, unless there was one or two good pieces that I wanted to keep and update it with new both design and fashion stuff. And I also think fashion tends to take more risks, especially at the level like we're talking about with the Met Gala, um, or if you're looking into Vogue or some of the high-end design, high designers. Um, they take more risks than designers do a lot of times, and I like to take those, interpret those risks onto pieces of furniture, because I think while it might be overwhelming to take an entire trend and build a home around it, having one or two pieces designed around high fashion is exciting to me. It takes a little longer to do it with the narrower cut. It's not a bad thing, it just does. And because we're dealing with weird corners and edges, it's really easy to pull product away from um, spots like right here where the bend is. Let's get into this one last spot. Now this is only going to be on the sides. I'm not doing it on the top of the table because it makes it, the table surface unstable to set anything on top of. So I'll figure out something else to put on the top. So let me take this over here because I got a whole lot more of this table to work on. And clean it off, clean it back into the container. And then this stencil will get thrown into the sink for a good cleaning tonight. Now on bigger pieces, I will usually have at least two stencils to work from. Um, and I, uh, I, I usually expect to cut at least one of them apart by the time I'm done because uh, these won't fit easily. And I don't like bending my stencils to fit I prefer to trim them in. And if somebody says, well, that's expensive, I can figure that into the cost of the job. Um, that is part of the, the cost of doing this kind of thing. And let's see, I had a piece of, well, I had a piece of plastic wrap to cover this. So right now I'm just gonna stick that on there. Give me a second, I'm gonna throw this into the sink and then we're gonna come back and clean up those edges. Like I said, I get it into the water right away because that will keep the stencil from being ruined and I could live without that. So let's get back to our cotton swabs over here and clean up those edges. 
Now I had less bleeds, less big bleeds, because I kind of held the stencil down. But I still have some that need to be cleaned up. They're just not as extensive as the other side. And that's all right. Each time you do a new surface, you can have some very different problems arise. I haven't had to do one of the sort of barrel stave kind of things in a long time. And they can be a bit of a challenge. There's that. Let's get in here and get this. And really, I'm just carving out the way it should be instead of the way I got the bleed to squish it. Again, as I've said, this is not going to stay white like this. It's going to dry very translucent. So when we come back to this tomorrow, there may still be some opaque spots because some of this is a little thicker than in spots than in others. But I think the results tomorrow will show very, a very dramatic difference and it will be very, very pretty. So this is how we're going to go from here. We're going to go with this. And once this is dry, this then all of these marks, which are registration marks, these little spots here, these little half moons on the side, that allows me to move the stencil up, down, and around. And that's what we'll do next tomorrow once this is dried overnight, because then I can do that without smearing any of this, which clearly would be a big deal right now. And what I'm doing right now by patting it down, this spot is very heavy. And then we get to this spot where the corner is here, where this bend is, and it gets very thin. So I'm sort of patting it down to even out the distribution, although I, I will stop doing this in just a second and I'll probably wait until it gets just a little bit, bit firmer because then I can do it without smearing it. All right, everybody, let me take a look and see if there are any questions I missed. Hey, Martha, nice to see you here. And Lori and Becky, Lisa, Sherry. Oh gosh, there's a ton of you guys here. Kim, I appreciate all of you popping in here today. Uh, watching me work on this, watching me make, you know, sometimes I make decisions right in the middle of doing the job. And that was what happened today with adding the silver to it. I love how this is coming out. I can't wait to work with you guys on this again tomorrow. Have a wonderful afternoon. And I'm going to say good afternoon to you all. Bye-bye.